trigger warning, Death and Friends is not a podcast for the light of heart. Many dark and serious subjects will come up. Listener discretion is advised. Hola. Hola. Wait, what? Buenas tardes. Okay. Um, did you get the notes for dinosaurs, by the way, that I emailed you? Ah, oh, sí, claro. Ahora, el episodio de hoy va ser... What are you doing? What is this? What the hell is happening? Um speaking Spanish. We all got subscriptions to learn new languages. What? Since when? Josh got him. I don't know. Uh, hey, Melody, can you patch me over to Josh, please? No problem, air doctor. Uh, I'm sorry, was that German? Hey, y'all. You called for me? Buenas tardes, Josh. <laughs> okay, Jesus Christ. Okay, Josh. Si, sí, senor. <sighs> Jesus. Dude, you keep spending money. You gotta chill out on that. But we got all this milk bar dinero. Si. Sí. Ahora somos ricos. Yeah, we were rich until Josh started spending all our goddamn money. Okay, but you have mentioned how nice it would be if we all spoke more Spanish. Okay, I said it would be nice if we all learned a second language, like German, the other language that I also know. Uh, yeah, I guess that makes more sense now. Did y'all assume I meant Spanish just because I'm Mexican? Mexican? You're Mexican? Since when? Okay, fine. Ugh. God damn it. Okay. I didn't know he was Mexican. Josh, it's only like Duolingo premium, right? Like how expensive could this be? Since the day you were born, Mexican? It's $8,000 with a 36-month commitment. Hijo de su pinche madre. Vas a ver, hijo de pinche tarado. Oh, good. You're using the app. Oh, my God. I'm going to fuck you up. Te voy a... Melody, call bicicleta. security. Angel, no. no. All right. Skeleton Army, I'm Angel, and this is Nash. Fear me. You should. She can order paella now. <laughs> Today's episode is about the one joke that everybody loves about Monty Python, but doesn't actually know the context of either sketch or the historical event, which is the subject of today's episode. The Spanish Inquisition is one of many inquisitions that are perpetrated by the Catholic Church. This one being arguably the most famous one due to the aforementioned skit. Not terribly surprising, considering that as much as I would like any mention of John Cleese to not reach me, here he fucking is. I have an opinion on Monty Python, and this is it. I have seen it. Some of it. It was on TV. Moving on. Nash, if you would so kindly, paint the picture. Like Angel said before, the Inquisition was one of several lasting between the 12th and 19th centuries. The one we're focusing on today was a unique one, because it was technically started not by the church itself... But by monarchs at the time. Wow, different. Picture this. You're a religious person. Praise be Zoe Kravitz. Okay, sure. Literally, it doesn't matter which one, and you're playing tress across from a Muslim person, you're eating a kosher meal, you're listening to Christian hymns, I imply creed. This is getting a little weird and also specific. The point is that in Spain at the time, the Iberian Peninsula is a beautiful place of diversity, religious tolerance, and overall good vibes. It is ruled by multiple Spanish monarchs with their own little sets of rules, and where most people got along and only a small percent of the population were populous and intense with those beliefs. This is ringing a few bells. Luckily, the government at the time is great. Oh wait, no they don't, because they agree with the small populist and over-religious part of the populations. Are the bells ringing louder? Can everyone hear them? While some of it is in fact related to religious belief, it is mostly due to gaining authoritarian power and more importantly, money for those up high. Hmm, this is weird. The bells are definitely ringing. It's a good thing there are no modern parallels. That being said, please meet our good friend, and that's in quotation marks, Racismo. Hey, buddy. How are you? How are the kids? They're great. Yeah. (laughs) Good. I'm glad. <laughs> How's the infiltrating video games going? Is that going well? This is your year, huh? <clears throat> mm-hmm. If history has shown us anything, and it hasn't, it's that evil takes time. I guess it has. Laying groundwork, only then to strike when attitudes towards injustice become accepted. A lot of it's perpetuated, at least in part, by, if not exclusively, racism. Racism. Yay. 
For example, while the Iberian Peninsula is a melting pot of cultures, the laws did not give Jews or Muslims the same legal rights, forcing them to live in lower class, lower income neighborhoods. The only way to find upward mobility is selling out, sadly. Towards the beginning of the 14th century, Jews in the Iberian Peninsula begin to be persecuted, many of them forced to convert to the Catholic Church. These are known as conversos. Those converted were always under suspicion of continuing their practice and faith, derogatorily known as marranos, which to this day is known as a slur or something to call somebody of a low class or judgment. So, for Spanish speakers, when you call somebody a marrano, you're not only dehumanizing a person, you're also using a racial slur. Moors, members of the Muslim population of Spain and Portugal, ruled most of the Iberian Peninsula starting in the 8th century. After many conquests by Christian states, they were slowly but surely conquered themselves and eventually joined Jews in the not-so-fun group of being targets during the Inquisition. Hey, here's a fun fact. Fun facts win. What the hell? Quiet, you. The Moors, if you don't know, are not technically a race, but a group of Muslim people from the Middle Ages being mostly made of Arabs and North African origin. The Spanish term Moreno comes from the term Moor. It's used to describe Muslims that were conquered and in many ways erased by the Christian conquistadors of Spain. Look at that. Another word in the language created by colonists that we use today that is a racial slur. (sighs) Love that for us. We're going to fast forward a few decades and skip ahead to 1469. Nice. (laughs) Nice. The marriage of Ferdinand II and Isabella I united the Spanish kingdoms of Aragon and Castile, creating a more centralized Spanish government. Called the Catholic monarchs, Ferdinand and Isabel decide, hey, let's do a quick war crime. The Geneva Convention doesn't even exist yet. Just a quick little... Just a just a fucking... <laughs> just a little one. Yeah. Hey, we're going to go get McDonald's. Should we do like a war crime? <laughs> yeah, I'll get a number two in a war crime. <laughs> hey, look, if I get a war crime, are you guys going to also do war crime? Because I don't want to be the only one having war crimes. <laughs> And we're not splitting the bill, right, on the war crimes. Like, we're all going to pay our own war crime tax. We're all going to pay our share of the war crime. No, just kidding. We're not going to pay it. We're going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? We're going to complain to the manager and make them pay for yeah, it? 100%. That's how war crimes work. <laughs> they get permission from Pope Sixtus IV, weird choice of a name, giving <laughs> them the power to call for an inquisition. At the time, the Catholic Church is, like, super big into the whole religious war situation. They're mm. just mm. all about it. Consolidating power, forcing everyone to become Christians and such, killing minorities, you know, just, just Sunday after church activities. Thank you, Pope Sixtus the <laughs> Fourth. Isabel and Ferdinand want the country to be a theocracy that they alone control. Just them. Alone. They can't do that, though, with a large Muslim population in the South or the Jews that you've put over in the poor neighborhoods. You know, you, you guys did that over there. Mm-hmm. You did that. So, yeah. In 1473, three days of anti-Semitic riots begin in Cordoba, Castile, against conversos, the Jews that had already converted to Christianity. You know, the ones that already succumbed Mm -hmm. to your fucking ridiculous demands? Yeah, Yeah, those. The police kind of don't do a good job at protecting the minority group, with some reports saying that they actually helped in the riots. Oh my god, it's the bells again. Wow, what a surprise. No modern parallels here. More importantly, a Catholic priest, who I'm just going to assume hates the Jews... I think that's safe. ...says that the conversos are not only practicing Judaism in private, but they're also trying to infect Christianity with it, and thereby committing the worst act of all, heresy. Heresy. Ah, yes. The justification that the monarchs called upon to start the Inquisition. According to the Catholic faith, heresy is the worst possible sin. To denounce God, ignore his rule, make fun of the big guy in the sky. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? No, seriously, why would you do that? Even the slightest, even the slightest slight. A slight slight. Could be seen as this. You got to be like Jesus and his 12 apostles only. You can't even call them like JC and the boys. Or Chewy and the Rough Riders. The Jesus Christ Apostle Experience. The JC360. Jesus Christ 182. This went on for 20 minutes. It is in 1478 that they get the official permission to start the Inquisition, specifically to target the Jews, and later, just all the all the minorities. Wait, who gives them permission? God? The Pope? Pope Sixtus is like, yeah, go for it. Yeah, the Pope. They, they get the Catholic Church. Okay, Sorry, so they, they were, were like, hey, yeah. Catholic Church... We are going to ask permission for this war crime, actually. Again, we started an inquisition. The Catholic Church like, you bet. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was like, hey, Catholic Church, what's up? And they're like, what do you want? It's like nothing. You only call when you need money. So what do you want? Okay, I just wanted to like, get permission real quick. Okay, for what? I just wanted to do a war crime. 
Oh! Oh! Sandra, get in here! Get in here! Oh no, yeah, it is! It's Isabella! Get this, she wants to do a wall cry. Oh my god, it's our first one! Oh my god, okay, yeah, absolutely. What do you need? What do you need? Tell me what you need. You don't need anything. You just want permission. Oh, sweetie, of course you have a permission. You can start so any war crime you. you want. Oh my god, sweetie. Oh my god. I just want you to know that we're so proud of you. Oh my god, you know what? I know you didn't ask for help. We're gonna send our best people over, okay? I said I wasn't gonna cry. I said I wasn't gonna cry. Look at me. I'm I love you so much, sweetie. Over you this. have no idea. Okay, alrighty. Are we gonna see you for Thanksgiving? We love you. Hello? In 1481, the first auto de fe took place. These are public trials that are really public spectacles of murder, essentially. You know, just some of those. Murder! Yes. Killing those who have been convicted of heresy. In 1484, the Pope names a Grand Inquisitor in Tomas de Torquemada. He writes the 28 articles that outline the crimes that are considered heresy and the methods of interrogation and punishment. And this is the part where things take a turn in a direction. We are not... I repeat, we are not going to go fully into detail about every godforsaken torture method. Uh -huh. Just know that they were the fucking worst. If you're really wondering, oh, so like, no medical facts about torture? Correct. Black death, polio, spontaneous combustion. Dying comes and after death comes decomposition. It may seem sad and also gross, but here you are and here's your host, not an actual doctor, but it's medical, medical, medical facts with Dr. A. We're going to talk about the second most common cause of death during the Inquisition. Sepsis, a.k.a. infection. You hear about this? Open wounds. Sepsis is the body's extreme response to an infection. Infections that lead to sepsis most often start with the infection and open wounds spreading to the lungs, urinary tract, or quite possibly the worst place. The, the butt? <laughs> no, the gastrointestinal tract. I mean, yeah, the butt, actually. This was specifically true for adulterers or men that were charged with sodomy, huh. as the most popular torture device was the Judas chair. Not going to detail it, but if you're really that curious, go ahead, look it up. Uh, it's not a good time. Without timely treatment, sepsis can rapidly lead to tissue damage, organ failure, and, of course, death. Picante. The Inquisitors come for everyone, and very quickly do people begin turning on each other. They're straight up lying in order to get the eye of the local Inquisitor off of them. And Inquisitors, by the way, I know this is going to be a shock, but they're just like extra shitty priests. If such thing was possible. Yeah. They're trained in fucking shit up, that's true, and finding heretics. And they're learning torture methods in order to cleanse the holy Catholic Empire. Just give it a good clean. It, it must be clean. Blood. Clean. All it took for someone to almost immediately become arrested, torture, and so on, was a simple accusation. So, imagine this. You're minding your own fucking business, and you say something like, Zoe Kravitz looks incredible today. And someone is like, hey, you're not talking about Jesus? Some would argue, this is the beginning of Karen's. Well, that example was a little bit silly. Okay, really? It was pretty easy to call someone who isn't a Christian a heretic. Hundreds of thousands of Jews and Muslims are arrested, tortured, and then expelled from Spain. In 1492, Columbus said, nope, sorry, Ferdinand and Isabella issue an edict that Spanish Jews have a choice between exile and baptism, and they eventually exile over 160,000 Jewish people. That includes post-baptism, by the way. In 1507, they exile Moriscos, Muslims that followed suit and converted to Christianity. Also post-baptism. It's almost like no matter what you do to try to fit into this shitty-ass society, even when you succumb to the insane requirements that they establish, you still don't belong. Crazy. Hmm, it's weird. Hmm. Do you hear any bells? Yes. I've been hearing them this whole time. Merry Christmas! The Spanish Inquisition lasts between 1478 and 1834, which is, by the way, if you're doing the math at home, almost 400 years, having largely purged the country of Jews and Muslims, as well as many former members of those faiths who had converted to Christianity. The Spanish Inquisition turns its attention to, hang on, let me check my notes. <laughs> Other Christians. 1517, the Reformation begins with Martin Luther publishes his thesis. This led to the separation of the Christian church into different denominations. So naturally, as the Spanish Inquisition is happening, the Catholic Church is out here just murdering people for 
Well, hang on, I gotta check my notes now. Yeah. Uh, sh- sh- Here, do you want mine? <laughs> yeah, please. Let me see. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Existing. Uh-huh. Some folks might want to step away and become Protestants, because, you know, they're out here murdering people for existing. So this, of course, did not go well for them. Oh. While the Protestant population was small, they were swiftly dealt with by the Catholic Church. By dealt with, more murder. So let's make no mistake here. This was all just a large power grab. Let's say we give the Catholic Church the benefit of the doubt. Which we don't. And we buy the fact that this was a genuine attempt to remove heretics from the Church. Which it ain't. Much like literally any other thing in history, it will be exploited. Eventually, the Inquisition, much like a many an authoritarian... Racist. I'm going to throw capitalists in there, too. ...type of power, it eventually cannibalizes itself. Mm. Here's the thing. Inquisitors, you hear about this? Mm-hmm. You, you hear about this? No. They're essentially state-sanctioned serial sadists. Say that five times really fast. Like actual fucked up people that enjoy torturing them. Not the happy fun time form popularized by mainstream media by, hang on, let me double check here, Stephanie Meyer. Fun facts with Nash. It is utter bullshit that this is my fun facts for this episode. Go on. No. Read it. I don't want it. Twilight the multi-book series that was made into a successful movie series that launched the careers of Batman and a very powerful lesbian was originally a Fifty Shades of Grey fan fiction. That's it. That's the fun... Why is that the fun fact? Ah, that makes me so happy. Hey there. Uh, Future Angel here. Turns out the Fifty Shades of Grey is the fan fiction that came from Twilight. (laughs) the other way around i think this makes it much funnier because it was an extra waste of nash's fun fact uh, all right back to the episode after a while the church starts to smarten up to the fact that they kind of they can just kind of accuse anyone that they want people up high in both the spanish monarchy and the catholic leadership well as it turns out many priests would just accuse guys just so they could sleep with those guys or their wives. Very Laverne Beria of them. <laughs> You've got to love fascism pretending to be something else, you know? Mm. Just like mom used to make. Mm-hmm. Accusations like this are used as ammo to accuse other priests up high in the pecking order. Of course, you can't just torture and declare priests guilty, because that would look bad mm. to the Catholic Church. So they're sent off to live on a lavish island in exile. You know... Like the rich bastards that they are. So we forgot to mention that the moment you were accused, all of your stuff, your money, and sadly, in many cases, your body, now belonged to the Spanish government, with the Catholic Church taking just a nice side cut as well. Mm. Rich bastards. It wasn't until 1834 that the then Spanish queen, Maria Cristina de Bourbon, declares the Inquisition over, more than likely due to the start of the first Carlos War. Spanish history and its multiple civil wars get really, really messy. Just gross. Looking forward to that episode, sons of bitches. It ends before you're ready, because there's more wars. You went out for a war crime and came home with 18 different civil wars. And on that note, that's the episode. A special thanks to you, our favorite listener. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. A rate and review would also be required. You have to do it now. I said that. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Gorilla Jokes. And I'm at It's Nashville. And of course, follow the podcast at Death and Friends Podcast. Want to become an official member of the Skeleton Army? Join us on Patreon. We use it to cover our sound guy's medical bills. In order to properly write medical facts, we expose Dom to all the illnesses and ways to die we talk about on the show. I heard this week he was not a fan of Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden? You mean THE Iron Maiden? Like, the torture device? Yeah, why? Wait, is he just listening to records? Like, Iron Maiden records? Wait a second. What? He's he's supposed to be in in a un, like the Iron Maiden. That's what he's I just told Jake Maiden to do. I said we were gonna. Whoa, whoa, hang on. Who's in charge of the Patreon money then? Hey guys, I hope it's okay. I bought original first edition vinyl. Jesus Christ! Records? How this is supposed to be medical facts. We're supposed to stick him in the thingy. Oh my God. Okay. Josh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. Speaking of Patreon. Shout out to all the Patreon and all our listeners on the Brendan Fraser level. Is it Kara or Kara? I mean, either way, you're awesome, but we're just curious. 
So check it out at patreon.com slash deathandfriends. We've got a website now. It's deathandfriends.org.org because we are committed to making the internet worse. I love that for us. Now, this week's episode was a wild one talking about a whole lot of genocide. So sorry about that. And at the end of the day, death is tricky to talk about. So we need you to remember something, okay? Yes. You listening? Mm-hmm. Listen to this? Mm-hmm. Okay. You are loved. You matter. And if you don't want to be your own friend, we will happily be your friend. You can borrow any of our one Iron Maiden records. Any of them. Just... There's so many albums. There's so many. Teapot first editions. Everything. They're so expensive. Just borrow them. Sell them, actually. Dude, just, get, just give us a kickback. Until next time, Skeleton Army, stay spooky. Love you. Love you. Josh, get over here! This has been a Knavery Inc. podcast. Go to knaveryinc.com for more details. Executive produced by Jacob Duffy Halbleib. Audio design by Dominic Guanzon. Themes and transitions by Amy Doe. The fuck is a knave? Remember this is a comedy podcast? Don't use it in your research papers.